it's, it's very likely that this thing I read in a magazine today will help me with blah, blah, blah. Hey, welcome back to another engineering podcast. Uh, I'm Adam. <laughs> I'm Ryan. Uh, we're back to, I don't know, talk about stuff. Uh, <laughs> we've been we having do. fun with the hit list format, so we're just going to kind of just keep doing them like that for a little while, um, other than when we have guests in. But, but we're going to start off with one where we're... It's going to be kind of hit list style, <laughs> but it's going to have a theme to it. That theme for this one is things they shouldn't teach kids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We literally just came up with this like four seconds ago. And we're yeah, like, I Let's cut kick you off, off in the that, middle of a, a great, sentence to a start great the podcast. I like that we're uh, going in blind because it's like a really polarizing thing to say. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. So... We, but we were talking about statistics, which is what yeah. started that conversation, right? Oh, <laughs> well, I had I had a bunch of people really fired up yesterday talking about math and how we should teach everyone like basic math up through algebra and then for sure stop everything else and just teach statistics. Why? Because <laughs> uh, they're super relevant to everything that's going on in the world these days. And things like uh, pre-calculus are... N- not for almost every person on earth. And so is the reason then that you need to take statistics, the value of understanding how those numbers came to be or those, the, what those numbers mean in the context of the universe and the world? Like, uh, I think people, I think, let me, let me clarify the, the comment I just made. So, uh calculus is used at least at an at an introductory level to like model stuff in the world to like model real life things that are kind of hard to model with like you need calculus to understand physics like when you study basic physics high school physics is all in a vacuum so none of it really applies to the real world because there are other forces affecting the system that you're studying calculus is the math that's required to take that kind of shit into account it's really complex yeah calculus is like you don't use calculus at the grocery store to like but super applicable your... actually to the real world like the math of the real world is super it's it's super very complicated math. but you mostly don't <laughs> need it right <laughs> I guess I guess where I'm going is that if everyone understood how statistics worked a little better, and I don't even mean like knowing how well, to do a regression. Like if you just understood <laughs> what a standard deviation was and like kind of roughly how statistics are used and done in scientific uh, studies, right. it would impact every single person every single day. Whereas knowing how to differentiate an equation is completely fucking useless for almost everyone almost all the time. But when you talk about you should learn statistics, is it just a matter of people need to understand what a statistic actually represents? And I don't mean understand the study that got you that statistic or the math that got you that statistic, but more like the broader idea, statistic, right? Like, what is it? It's the yeah. thing, it's the, it's the end result of predictive math that is meant to represent in some sort of piece of the pie way is the chance that X were to happen again if you were to go just do it. It's like a flip a coin thing. It's always 50-50, despite the gambler's fallacy where you think it's got to come up head sometimes. <laughs> like, that no, really doesn't. It's always 50-50. Like, so when you see statistics in, in an argument on the news... Like my question is: Is it better? Do, do you do, do you need people to understand? Like, well, that number reflects a certain thing that was based on a blah blah blah, like and all the stuff you actually learn in a statistics class, yeah. or do they just need to more broadly reframe the idea of in in you know teach your kids that a statistic is just a a number that says this might happen, but uh, you know it <laughs> might not if you were to repeat these things. <laughs> where do you where are you seeing statistics right now? Right, like a lot of opinion polls yeah yeah for people that might listen to this in a number of years this is it's election season like what so that opinion poll if you say if they say the favorability is 64 percent for donald trump 
fifteen percent more likely. Sixty four percent, right? <laughs> what you're trying to guess by polling other people and saying sixty four percent of the reporting people said that they would vote for Bush. That's just so now you're looking at one person and you're going, okay, what's the chance that he's going to go vote for Bush? Bush? I don't even think Bush it's is predictive. Running. You still have no. I, you're right. I just <laughs> I meant to say Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But I got all fired same. up on, like, is it about reframing? Just what does it even mean when somebody says, with 70%, blah, blah, blah. Or do you right. think you really should study it? Like, is the study of, like, think about what we studied when we took statistics. Yeah. Like, when did we take, did we take, we took probability, I remember, uh, with Mr. I Pierce. We, I think Mr. Pierce was that whole, that whole, A lot of gaps that in my whole memory. year <laughs> was statistics. Yeah, okay. It could have been. And then you could pick AP yeah, statistics. Uh, or now you can. We never got to pick statistics? AP statistics. Yeah. Damn. I guess statistics is pretty hard to be teaching a kid. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but then no one gets exposed to it. I guess this conversation that I was having yesterday that prompted <laughs> this topic was more around the concept of like, uh, where stuff has gotten wildly complicated like topics back at like a couple hundred years ago you could list all the topics that you go in to study and you could like pursue one and learn everything there was to learn about it i'm probably overstating that dramatically if someone here from 200 years ago was here to talk to me about it but nowadays there's like this there's kind of the only like educational pursuit that's available is this extremely academic pursuit where it's like you've got to learn the theory and understand the underlying aspects and you've got to be able to do statistics to to be taught statistics and i think we need to start having layers of depth that go in into things where if you are not a math major if you're not pursuing a science you still really need to know statistics but you Isn't don't need to know how to social calculate studies? them. Uh, I never had a class called social studies, which is weird because you hear about that on TV all the time. What is social <laughs> studies? I think what we experienced as geography <laughs> is what is that social ends science? up in social studies. Yeah. Social studies, social science. Is that just like social a? Is that a? <laughs> though, I think they're two different things. <laughs> that a there realm used to of be classes? a class called social studies. Like there used to be home ec. Um. I was just talking to a buddy today about how we used to have a wood shop and how that wood was, shop great. was great. Wood shop was yeah, great. Is that a social social studies class? No, that that would be it's an art class. <laughs> <laughs> um humanity. Anyway, so statistics more you're saying it's important to it feels to me like you're talking about media literacy. Uh, when you say the when yeah, you give me the reason that everyone should know statistics, it sort of boils down to media literacy. So they understand what is being spewed at them to make a certain point. It's interesting because, so think about it this way. You you used to have to go read a newspaper in order to have a well-informed opinion of the matters of the time, <laughs> right? You had to go to do an active thing to take in that information to then have an opinion. So if you were just kind of working on shit, illiterate, or just don't care... Like, you could be completely out of touch with what was going on in the, except where it maybe bumped into your life and people probably talked about it, right? Social stuff. Now, between social media, which fills in that social gap aggressively, we have like these 24 hour news cycles where I'm being bombarded by things CNN wants me to see, even when I'm not paying any attention to CNN. And so it's, it's an interesting idea that, uh, to me at least, that, how this statistics ties into this broader idea of media literacy that's just kind of like a relevant thing because you're being hit with this media where they're firing it out and you just run into it where it used yeah. to be this social studies idea, right? Here's the things to know about the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's even how newscasts used to like be introduced. Right. Like these are, I'm Dan Stores Rather, and world. here's what you need to know tonight. Our boys in blue. <laughs> you know, like, Our boys in blue. <laughs> what is that reference? I don't know. <laughs> Our boys in blue have advanced on the German front. <laughs> Gotta go watch. Uh, oh man, we're so out of touch with the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, no, I'm talking about like newsreels before movies, you know? For sure. Anyway, what's something else that kids shouldn't be taught? Uh, history. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the, here are my reasons. Uh, one, uh, they have no frame of reference for what the hell history is. So there's no way to get them to connect to it. If a kid's excited about history, by all means, they can read history books. But generally speaking, you're 10, you've lived in the same house, in the same city, and you've interacted with the same like three people your whole life. Your so world it's consists dumb. of your house, a car, your school, the cell, the that grocery you're sent to store. Like at that age, it's places you went with your parents. So maybe you're right. aware of the zoo. And you're aware of, you know, the pool. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of like just places a 10 year old would go in his life. But you're right. I mean, <sighs> although I don't think we're talking 10, right? We're talking more like 15, <laughs> 16, right? So you can at least drive. But still, I agree with what you're saying. But you're not saying, <laughs> like, you're not saying we shouldn't study history so much as you should study it later. Uh, oh, it for sure, should for sure be studied later, and it can certainly, I don't mean to say it shouldn't be studied at all, but to get all caught up in, like, global social interactions between nation states and presidents and kings, <laughs> like, kids don't give a shit. That doesn't make any sense to them. Right. So later on in life, they will be tremendously interested in that as they right. gain perspective on the world and realize how big a deal being, like... 20 is or then 30 40 50 i mean i can't even imagine what it's like to be 75 years old and have that perspective on the world and at that point you see that interest spark in people and people dive into history in older ages because well, you're driven by it by your own life like i'm always trying to think of it from the perspective of ideas of the classes we should take at whatever age like at least what we experienced which was then fairly standardized as a course through lower education, it's of great importance to understand history. But until you have perspective to consider, like, I, it's only in the last few years that I feel like I can get around, my head around the size of World War II, yeah, how many something. countries were involved, how much money it cost, like... None of that stuff makes who, any sense when you're the, little. Just weird politics and the and the and the the gravity of saying we're going to go do a thing that, with all likelihood, is going to kill a million of our citizens. At sixteen, I was like, "Yeah, whatever." A million. I'll, mem I'll remember this you? so I can get to the test. You don't even really know what a thousand means when you're sixteen. You've never had a thousand of anything. <laughs> 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 you've never had thousands of you've never traveled a thousand miles you've never like spent a thousand dollars you haven't right. met a thousand people like you don't have a freaking yeah, clue it's funny i mean my perspective on taxes <laughs> to this day if taxes come up i'm usually like you go drive from one side of our country to the other and appreciate how freely you did that and you can still say that that because that's all tax funded Right. Like yeah. that road, that road existing and the fact that you can just go state to state is because people pay their taxes. Some of them. So you can tell when they're not being paid because the road changes all of a sudden. Road. Totally. <laughs> so maybe maybe my point here and I like this game where you keep asking me what else shouldn't be taught. But <laughs> maybe my point is we need to we, we should take into account like the frame of reference for people when we're teaching them things and only teach it to a certain Instead level. Instead of just having a list of things that you should, or like to me, it seems like the, the idea of why they teach history is because it's an important thing to know. And so then when you're an adult trying to create a curriculum of important things to understand, I can see why history makes that list, but it's worth reconsidering the age at which that pops up. Like, Maybe you need to focus more on history when you're in college. And so what do you fill that time with I've on got the a other question side for you. in high school? When was the last time history affected something you did during the day? Other than talk about history. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, I was going to try to find out. I was trying to think of a conversation that came. It's like history definitely falls right. in that category of stuff where I agree. You're right. it's, it's incredibly, it's incredibly interesting. interesting and, and I, th 
I think it's really important for informed decisions and like me too. And it does affect where I really was going to go with this, but I kept backing off it because it feels like a bullshit answer. <laughs> but but it's be it, it it lands on governments and laws and stuff. Like if you don't understand the complexity of the relationship between two countries, it's like well, there's a lot of reasons they don't like us too much. <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of craziness too. But and so history factors into the weirdness of how all these situations come to exist. Cause you just, cause you, there's so many things to look at. If you're going to look at like, well, why does this guy hate that guy? <laughs> it's like, right. Why are they crazy fighting? when it's you like, look into uh, it? But history but, fa- falls on the side of, uh, of, of stuff now that is, uh, just, just look it up. Right. You I know? was going to say, so, so then it's, it's a question of a thing where you treat a thing, you can treat a thing differently if access to the information is freely available. If school is the only way you're ever going to get it into children because you're living when you're not bombarded by media telling you things all the time. Also, you can't go find it. I mean, at least you go to the library, right? And hope that they have a book on what you're interested in or whatever. But what do you think teachers say to kids these days when kids say, and why can't I use my calculator on this test? Because they used to say, you won't always have a calculator with you. But that's, <laughs> that's BS yeah. now. It was right. pretty much BS when we were kids. And so let's go to the next thing they shouldn't teach people. I'm going to ask you. If I'm, yeah, I'm chasing that. <laughs> feel I'm chasing, feel free to throw anything out. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm chasing the, I'm, I'm following your line of attack there. Why teach basic arithmetic? Basic. Basic. The water I'm drinking is too cold. Every time I take a sip, I bite my tongue. (laughs) (laughs) So basic arithmetic, I think people definitely use constantly throughout the day to think about stuff. And I mean like really basic, hardly even really division, kind of multiplication, I guess. You're like counting things, adding things up. It's like how many pounds, how many pounds? God, don't get me started on pounds. How many things do I need to put in the thing? You mean pounds so versus, You mean imperial versus metric? Yeah, imperial. Can we ditch imperial now that the UK is about to sink into the ocean? <laughs> That's what Reddit says it's going to happen at least. It's going to sink into the ocean? <laughs> yeah, I just they vote, assumed, they voted I just assumed winter was coming. <laughs> be that too. <laughs> uh, like we're going to go visit and there's going to be dudes riding around on horses with swinging swords at each other. <laughs> Awesome. That'd be wonders for their tourism. Dragons and shit. <laughs> they should just rebrand. You ever seen the movie Doomsday? Europe. That's how it's gonna end up. No, what's Doomsday? Uh I don't it's just one of those like Rona Mitra's in it. Killing people movies. Rona Mitra? <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Like But I'll uh, take it. You'd recognize her if you saw her. She's a, she's she's in a lot of movies like that. Underworld. There's another example. Of You're looking it up, aren't you? <laughs> you tried to do it so subtly without moving your head. Huh. Um, person does look familiar. But look at how fast you pulled up that piece of information on the internet. Pretty quick. Lee. I just think it's <laughs> so in, in a... Should education progress such that we assume the continued fidelity of the connection that we have to this information? I keep... I feel like we tend to act like the internet's going to go away at any moment and the compute infrastructure that we have is going to go away. And so here are these subset of skills you have to learn, but like what you're talking about, I think when you say basic arithmetic is how many times did you use it? I mean, yeah, there's three plus two. I need two more to have five. (laughs) Like if you're shopping, but otherwise it's just an understanding of proportions, which then is statistics, right? So we're kind of like full circle back to, (laughs) How much of even the things that we think like, oh, it's the th- reading, writing, arithmetic. Like, do we need the arithmetic part <laughs> in a world where computers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, It's totally. an interesting thought because what if they all go away and nobody can add? <laughs> well, here's, let's continue on this. Just my general rant on things we shouldn't teach people. I don't see the point in teaching people facts anymore either because (laughs) everyone is always wrong when they give you a fact always everyone's facts are always bullshit including mine right unless unless you like just looked it up somewhere in which case you probably looked it up somewhere where it's bullshit so there are no facts 
every time this, we've talked about this <laughs> repeatedly in our personal lives. Every time this comes up, I always feel like it's, it's almost like a weird full circle moment for science because, I mean, I guess people have always just treated as facts whatever they thought they knew. Right. Yeah. And then That's the great. science, yeah, the, we started teaching science more heavily, but very much in the context of like, here's a biology textbook. Here are the facts you need to remember to pass the test. If you remember those facts, you're doing science, right? Like versus an understanding of the scientific method, because it's important to know how people got to whatever they're presenting as a fact on the other side. Like it almost ends up being a media literacy thing. But science did so well at being a way to think about things versus, I don't know, tr scripture, I guess, or uh, word of mouth, whatever, you you know, some other idea of systems of morals mm -hmm. or ex exploration. Yeah. It did so well at it that the other sides have started co-opting it in the sense that they talk scientifically, but they don't do science and they're interpreted as facts by the people. So it's almost like it's, it's like science made it so far <laughs> that now it has to stop being science and be something different because people are taught, okay, this is a science, biology, chemistry, physics. Think about your exposure to all of those things. Right. And they're not it's non-scientific exposure to what science has figured out. But it's not about how did we come to believe this, right? Because the stuff in biology, you start going, well, that's how it is. I was taught that it's a fact. And it's like, no, that was just what they thought at the time oh, based yeah, on all, testing. Everything's wrong now. But right? they didn't tell you about the <laughs> testing. And we didn't even, we didn't talk about bi how biology, like doing biology as a science wow. until we got to AP bio. Yeah, and then we did And then it labs. was like, we did weird gene testing on fruit flies and shit, but like, we were doing labs. Yeah. I guess you do labs. Do you do labs consistently? Is that part of a science curriculum? Uh, I had a lot of labs every semester in college. Oh, but you took science stuff. I was all humanities in college, so all I did was write and think about shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Im that's important, too. <laughs> <laughs> but... I, so what I think is interesting, though, is like frequently when we have these conversations, what they shouldn't teach kids anymore, <laughs> I always end up saying, well, but what should they fill that time with? Because if the idea is you don't do American history, you don't do world history, instead you come up with a way to contextualize them into some other discussion. Because I think you should know about them. Yeah. You should know how our country came to be, and it should be floated out there. It seems like they should have a more... And this is where it starts to sound like Orwellian. They should have a better way of assessing your personality type, which I don't even believe that personality types are necessarily a thing, right? But if you got to sure. categorize, I'd rather have 20 categories rather than four grades, A, B, C, or D. <laughs> right. Like, so you stratify it that way and then have history there if that's a thing that you think is interesting. I mean, this is really what college ends up being, at least it's supposed to be. There are history things to do if that's your interest. <laughs> if not, there are engineering things to do, and you can specialize and stuff, right? But they, it feels like they instead they just pick these. It's still like biology, American history, world history. But what are you going to replace it with if you take out American history and world history? Woodshop, four or five classes of woodshop every day. So problem solving, <laughs> right? Like not hurting yourself. I feel like not what hurting we, yourself or others. Yeah, well, and that's it sort of comes back to the same. I think you should be trying to teach general literacy and programming. <laughs> and programming. No, problem solving oh, is what I is the real is the yeah. uh, more broadly, I mean, that's the argument for basic arithmetic. It's just problem solving. We're teaching you problem solving, but totally. they don't frame it that way. They frame it like memorize this, memorize this process so you can when I ask you this, it can blah, 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 and come out the other side as an answer. Like, that's all the perspective I feel like you have at that age. Like, why are you even in that class? Because you got a test at the end of the right. semester. Maybe that's and you all don't want to get in trouble, right? 
I don't think it is, but I think you can get it by learning programming. You can learn, get it by going to shop class, that by doing the things that we took away because we thought they weren't important. It turns out those are actually the most important at that age. <laughs> and you should focus on the other ones later if that's what you're into. Because why slam calculus into somebody because that's what you do your senior year just because it's the advanced track and they want to get to an, into a good college. If they're like, I, I don't, I'm not going to do physics. I don't need to understand integrals and <laughs> fucking, what was the other one? <laughs> this is like Me a full media, length, full media length literacy. episode. Yeah, I, that's why I was saying we should just make it a segment. <laughs> Things they shouldn't teach anymore and get increasingly more specific. Like a, ra like a regular segment on every, uh, uh, yeah. every episode? Um. I like it. I like the excitement we have here. I feel foolish for some of the things I've said off the cuff. You really caught me off guard when you hit record. <laughs> I think it feels to me like probably one of our best episodes, though. I'd like to go. Um, here's what I want to do. I'm just trying to get somewhere helpful let's, with it. Like, what let's try you... to make this a full a full topic here because we're okay. cruising on it and we're talking about cool <laughs> stuff. Let's uh, um, let's fight that though. What are some? What's something you think someone should teach? And then if we go back and forth like this, it's fun because <laughs> you can do STEM, and I'll hand uh, you st STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Is that right? The cool catchphrase. And for... I'm over here with a humanities degree, like a <laughs> philosophy degree. But honestly, my first answer is philosophy. Like, like should or should not teach kids. You should. You, the kind of thinking that philosophy is meant to be about, I think they yeah. should teach. I think hitting a sophomore with Aristotle is hard because the oh, it's real hard, it's really hard to like. It's it's not accessible. Right. But I think you could have the same conversation talking about comic book heroes, absolutely, and, and the conversation could happen. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of it's that it's it I do believe philosophy but I have some of the same beefs with it which is just like well the idea of philosophy most people's exposure to it if anything is they take an intro class and they read some stuff they basically don't understand and then have a weird conversation about it <laughs> afterwards right but it's really just like a to me, it's more just an, an exercise in thinking in a way that is a hundred percent. That's I wouldn't say a hundred percent, but ninety <laughs> percent. What's your margin of error? Not winnable. Like not. There will never be an answer. It's not worth worrying about the actual outcome of an argument when the argument is over trying to think of a basic philosophy problem that won't be too like okay so there's a thing there's a there's a there's a class there's a sect of philosophy that's about identity and the idea of like uh what 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 what's what is brian like <laughs> what is brian what, is it your body is it your head is it something that exists outside of you right nobody's yeah. ever going to win that <laughs> argument but you have it anyway in order to have it. Yeah. And it frees you up to be like, I'm going to try to argue from this side today. I'm going to try to argue from this side today. Totally. You just start thinking about how it's, to... It's problem solving. It's problem solving and it's perspective based. and it's, Kobayashi it's, Maru based problem solving. Right. You can't win. So let's see what happens. So and what it really if, takes out this, it takes out the urgency with which people talk about religion because it's about fatality and it's about like, you know, like even morality gets dicey to talk about in philosophy because it's coded and all that shit. But I always right. liked metaphysics where you were talking about like, what is, is <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a whole class. Yeah. Whole class um, right there. Probably lots of classes. You've always wanted to do this. So let's do it. Here's <laughs> uh -oh. a, here's a, here's a, oh, no. Here's a, uh, I think this came up in metaphysics. There's a, a, a thought experiment called the sh ship of Theseus. <laughs> I think it is. Sounds cool. And so Theseus is a pirate and he has his ship. And every once in a while, when they come into port, they replace a couple of planks on the ship because that's what happens. You're out doing sea shit bashes into you. You're out pirating, you know. Need new planks. And so 
in this story, like by the end of this story, if this keeps going, would you still call it oh, is it the Theseus' ship? ship? Of course you would. That's his ship. He just rode into town on it. Like, <laughs> But none of the material that makes up the old ship is left because all the planks have been replaced. The masts have been replaced. They've replaced the, all the pieces of that ship wear out over time and have been replaced. 100% different ship. But if he left port with one ship, and came back to port in the same day with exactly the same ship, you'd be like, that's not your ship. That's, that's some other ship you stole. That's not the ship of Theseus. <laughs> so, when, so when in that continuum does the identity of that ship go away? When does it stop being his ship if you ride that continuum? Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I need passage on Theseus' ship immediately so I can study this further. <laughs> but like as an experiment to try to answer that problem, you know, for a full discussion in a class is just I feel like you can the, as I just told that story, that was fairly accessible. But what you get in basic philosophy classes, I don't feel like they do that. I feel like they go, "Okay, we're going to read Plato." And it's, it's it, linguistically, it's hard to get around, like weird formats, and they speak in non-common phrases. And my my big complaint was always just too much reading. If my homework every night was read this page of information, and then we'll deal with it tomorrow, I might have done it. Uh, but if you give me like a hundred pages every night to read. Who's gonna? What are you gonna do with that? You can't talk about a hundred pages the next day. Yeah, you're telling me. You're not gonna remember a hundred <laughs> pages. Yeah, what did you just do? A thousand I just pages. Finished of the with night? law school. It wasn't that. It wasn't that brutal after first year, but the first year was really rough. I was just, every second I wasn't in class. I was reading. I got pretty bad grades in most classes where I had a lot of reading to do because then the tests were always kind of fact based. Even though they pretended like they were essays, they really were just skimming for facts. And right. You didn't have the right facts in there. This is because uh, engineering context or just school in general? I didn't have very much reading to do for engineering. Well, I did, but it was different because it was just like explaining math equations. So you're talking about humanities classes. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I took electives and stuff in college. So really poorly in them. So is that, so then would you, would you advocate for like Khan Academy style? Oh man, Khan Academy is really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Khan Academy is like a, uh, uh, they've kind of like mapped out topics in every branch of uh, knowledge that you can study. And you can take, you get little micro doses of everything that you want to study. So if you want to. Yeah. A step back, Khan Academy is mm -hmm. a website, the conceit of which was. Uh, my basic understanding is it was structured such that. You, you do your homework in class. Like at, at night, you watch lectures on video, and then class time is used to do the problems with someone there that can help you answer the questions that you have while you're trying to do the yeah. problem. And the night before, the inert lecture thing told you about what problem you were going to run into the next day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they I mean, flipped, that, they flipped. Well, that's that's uh. Like yeah, a I think that's the approach. Hybrid model or inverse model or something. Yeah, it's like a flip. That. It's a flipped model. It's uh, sit and listen to someone make noise at you when you're at home instead of forcing you to do like the hard thing, solve the problems at home by yourself, where your parents have to help right. you, which most parents probably don't or can't. Right, right. I couldn't help my kids with with calculus right now, and I took no, like fuck no years of calculus. I would just laugh about the time that I tried to do this and <laughs> right. was so bad at it. Which is what like, every parent oh, does. I remember calculus. That sucks. Oh, that sucks. I You're can't help you. On this. <laughs> and then you'll tell stories about how they'll get hints on the tests and stuff. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if Khan Academy explicitly is like this, but it one of the things that comes from it or that, that's emerging from new education is, yeah, flipping it. Watch right. lectures at home, like get some information thrown at you and kind of be thinking about it. And then the next day, come in and do stuff with it while you have this, this, this really valuable, highly educated person that's costing money to be there. Have them help you enact, have them help you take action on the knowledge that you were just presented as right. opposed to just being the way of presenting the knowledge to you. 
um, which I guess well, wasn't that wasn't available ten years ago. You couldn't no. Have it, that it has to do with the delivery mechanism. It just it's wasn't a, available, yeah. right? So the structure we have is sort of antiquated in the face of this information infrastructure. Yeah. Yep, that we have now. Um, but like, part of it even stacks up with an anatomical component that's like, or a you know psychochemical. You know, I don't know what you would call it exactly. But like there's a learning something and committing it to memory so that it's like operative the next day mm-hmm. requires sleep. There's a lot of science to stand for the assumption that <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> How much science? Give me some numbers. Give me some hard numbers. I need numbers. I don't know. Enough headlines I've read that I was like, okay. Um a statistically significant number of headlines. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but I, what I basically, what I mean is I have encountered what appears to be science on the idea that like (laughs) there are things chemically that happen at night for you to commit things to long-term memory and people's memory, like they have done tests with sleep deprivation and memory and sleeping is a really important part of this. And so the idea that you're supposed to learn something and then practice it, which is the concept, you know, like the conceit of homework is now go home and practice this. Like it's not even in the best order in terms of our sort of anatomical processes in response to that new information coming in. So to study it one day, sleep on it, and then try to do something the next day is a much better way to learn something. Mm -hmm. I employed that a lot when I was studying where I would be like, I can't get this into memory. And the idea that you should cram and keep slamming it in there doesn't work. It's like if you, either you can knock it down and, in 20 minutes and it's like, Oh, I got this or it's not going to stick. But sometimes you sleep on it and you wake up the next day and you're like, Oh shit, I know this. There's literally a chemical thing happening at night that makes that happen. That's not just like, Oh, it's been 12 hours. So you can't take 12 hours of daytime and go 12 hours after the first time I told you, you should remember it now. I remember that being really obvious when I was a kid and we had to do things like memorize poems or learn the definitions of words or spelling of words. If I started a couple days before the test or the presentation or whatever, and then did a little bit each day, it was really easy. But if I waited until the car ride to school, the day of the thing, it was almost impossible. Should I give up my study strategy for the entirety of law school? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Took notes by hand. Because there are studies showing that that's a better way to commit it to memory than typing. Right. Because you're not used to writing, which makes it something you know how to do well, but it's a foreign enough process in your daily life that your brain tags it and treats it differently. So I took notes by hand, mostly. A month out from the exams, I would start reviewing uh, just a commercial outline. They always tell you don't use commercial outlines, but... Uh, fuck that. They contain everything someone thought I needed to know for this What's test. a commercial outline? Oh, you like someone else's notes? You buy a big-ass outline for, like, everything that you like. Kaplan sells. Yeah, of course. Outlines for what you need for a civil procedure test. I used to be so pissed that I had and to take so my own notes. Just give I me the fucking compare, information. I would go through my notes, and I would basically just copy that outline by hand over the course of a month for each class. And I would also, at the same time on each topic, see if I had notes on it and see if anything new needed to go into that outline. But I wasn't outlining in the way that they'll tell you to do in law school. All I was doing, as far as I was concerned, was a task that would commit a certain percentage of it to memory. If I did it twice, wrote the thing out over a period of time, a certain amount of time a day, made sure I slept well at night, (laughs) maintained an exercise schedule... And reliably knew as much as I needed to know to pass every single test. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pass every test? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Damn. in law school, you don't have tests. You just, you just pass you the class or you fail. You have one test at the end of the semester oh, on okay. everything you covered. It's, that's why it, part of why it's so nerve-wracking, I think. Is, I thought it was nerve-wracking because the way they call on you. They just call blindly on you. This, that, what is that, that, that even has an antiquated the Socratic method. Antiqui- yeah, an antiquated <laughs> name. <laughs> That's a great way to run classes, by the way. I, w- I want to say that I took one law class uh, in grad school at business school. <laughs> I took a law class that was taught by a law professor, 
And it was so freaking stressful every day because you had to do your reading. Utterly miserable for all of your students. But you know what? If But it's a great way to teach. It's a fantastic <laughs> way to teach you. Why aren't all classes Wait, I want to say way? that. I want to I rephrase that. It's an effective way to teach. Oh, yeah. Okay, good rephrasing. Good right? Ref- because it that's is what I'm trying to way. say there. Like, I'm saying great because it's a it horrible sounds, way to teach. Because it's, <laughs> you know, it's funnier to say. But, like, it, it's, yeah, everyone hates it. And it's very unpleasant. But if you want people to be prepared for class, but I really remember a lot of shit from law school that I don't think I would have memorized if it were fluffier and easier. And yeah, I mightn't have gotten called on at any moment to present whatever. I wonder why more stuff isn't taught that way. Also, I made peace with just the impact it would actually have on me if I just said, I don't know. Yeah, I did that a lot too. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't do very well in that class. If I did if I did an entire law degree, it would just be like straight Fs. I mean <laughs> all if, the way through. In law school, if you're if F's, you are have already F's, have the mind for philosophy that I did, I guess it makes me sound shitty because I'm gonna be like, Law school is easy. It wasn't easy, it was a shitload of work, it was hard. But like I was generally pretty comfortable with getting called on and not really knowing what I'm talking about and yeah. but pushing the conversation forward. Mm. And that's all they're looking forward for. So you can get called that on. Sounds like go, a philosophy. You can go. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember the details <laughs> exactly of the case, but it, but that's the one where. And then I would kind of muddle through what I vaguely remembered from my half-ass attempt to read it, and then kind of go, "Is that that's the one with the guy that was on the bridge and got strangled?" And then they decided that it was. I, that's where I lost it. And the guy goes, misdemeanor, and he's happy to continue <laughs> with his lecture. And, you know, like, it doesn't, you're, <laughs> that's all they're looking for. All the grading is anonymized. So they don't know it's my test at the end of the year. Oh, yeah. So but you get like participation points, don't you? Yeah, totally. <laughs> but not, but not enough to like, you get, they can give you, the teacher is allowed based on knowing who you are to give you half a grade bump in one direction or the other. Oh, that's all? Yeah, that's it. Oh, who cares so about the that, that half a bump is all you're fighting for. When you, if you, I thought that was a big part of the grade. Um, also, though, if you if you're unprepared enough times, a lot of teachers would have a policy where you could they could give you an absence if you were unprepared. Oh, and, then and then enough then absences can stack up to administer an administrative drop, which means you're not oh. going to get the credits you need for that class. So right, so you're not completely free. Like, but you'd have to fuck up mm. pretty egregiously. To have that happen consistently, just muddle, muddy, muddling your way through an answer like a doofus <laughs> certainly never qualified me for that that problem. But here I am doing a podcast, right? So I, you know, I practice at just let's just talk <laughs> like, for sure. That's a useful so I, skill. You know, I think a lot of it is the public speaking aspect. A lot of it is the someone asking you a question aspect. It's like. It's hard to be, it's hard to make peace with saying, I don't know. (laughs) It is for sure. And I think this gets back to the education shit because the problem with a culture that's based around like, you didn't know that you get a bad grade makes you really uncomfortable just saying, I don't know. Totally. It's like, I still, lots of places in my life go, I could ask, I know exactly the person I need to ask to get exactly the answer that I want. And I, do, I don't do it because I'm afraid of appearing like I don't know what I'm doing. That's a really tough thing to get people over is appearing like they don't know. <laughs> don't know something. Just ask a question. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. Like I would spit out what facts I could think of and then usually ask a question. And that made me seem at least engaged, <laughs> I guess, which is probably better than, you know. Uh, occasionally somebody would go, I didn't do the reading. <laughs> 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 and I would always be, I would always feel like, oh, you don't, uh, that's like, because for the trade of some embarrassment, maybe, if you're not good at this, you could have tried to say something, and maybe you get away with it. <laughs> like, all well, you've that, got to lose is the exact same outcome you get if you just say, I didn't read. That brings up a really interesting point that is also <laughs> not taught very well, and that's the idea of partial credit. Because we teach people that you have to be, like, right and wrong. But in reality, 
uh, you can know stuff about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to talk about. You know varying levels of it, and you can write other stuff. Like, for instance, I used to have problems uh, sometimes on tests in college. I wouldn't know how to solve a more complex problem, so I would reframe it and say, hey, I don't know how to do this hard step, so I'm going to... I would like write on my test. I'd be like, I don't know how to do the hard thing that you added, but here, let me show you how to do like an easier version of this. And I would solve the easier thing. And I would always get credit for that, at least partial credit, sometimes even full credit. And people would would like, I'd tell friends, they'd be like, that's like cheating. (laughs) You're not allowed (laughs) to do that. And I was like, I just did it. (laughs) And they were totally okay with it. Why don't you also do that? Just like put the, and then I would like write as much as I could without actually solving things sometimes because I just didn't know. Um, and that's helpful. That shows that you know something. What I got be from that encouraged. is everyone should take improv classes. Creativity. Like we're everyone getting, should learn, my yet, conclusion should here, learn yes and, right? Like they should learn that like, well, you can either have nothing or you can at least say, okay, well, here's what I got. Yeah, if you don't have and... the answer, at least have a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you out or of almost question. every problem. <laughs> if you don't have the right answer, come up with a good joke or a question. <laughs> Just keep it moving forward. A um, deep philosophical question. A deep philosophical. <laughs> what are what, Mister Pierce? What what are numbers? <laughs> you know, if you think about it, <laughs> get out from get out from under the desk and uh, then get out of the classroom. <laughs> but I, it's you know framing it the way that we did. I don't think is irrelevant. What things they shouldn't teach anymore? I feel like an, uh, education curriculum is slow to evolve in a world where media has changed so much and evolved so So, quickly. It's so hard. It's impossible. What are we supposed to do to keep up with this? To, you know, like I I was talking the other day about writing to to you about how uh, I had recently written a letter longhand. And the whole time I was going like, okay, do we need handwriting anymore, really? Like, no. Like what? (laughs) I mean... it it's it's a, it seems like a crazy extreme place to take it right and listeners are immediately going to feel like of course we need f- a handwriting but like okay yeah you do use it but you know kids are typing their tests now <laughs> we don't send letters we type everything like knowing to type is essentially handwriting you know it's this communication it's a skill pertinent you know uh, essential to communication but it like, you see where I'm going with that, though? It's just that idea of, like, that's yeah. the kind of change sure. we're talking about, how fundamental it is, and then how that kicks back on... It's a wild... What do you, a, how do you adapt education to that, and how do you keep up with these changes? It's like, once Snapchat exists, you got a whole new communi- way to communicate that yeah. you're supposed to be preparing these kids for, and you got to go, whoa, we need new lessons. <laughs> like, we're in such a weird position having been educated at a time when there weren't things like youtube and wikipedia and then almost immediately like we basically finished we finished high school we finished all the shit they kept telling us to do that we were like oh we got a what right and then even college really this stuff really it was it was around but it wasn't prevalent like it is now and then all of a sudden we're like out of school and it's like boom the internet has everything on it and we're like, wait, what the fuck? What did we just spend the last 20 yeah. years doing? That transi- transition literally, like, we were right on pace to be perfectly equipped for the world that the internet <laughs> ruined. <laughs> like, <laughs> ruined it. It ruined like, the dark ages. But it resulted in other, other funny things, which is like, I, kids these days, I don't think, crash their computer all the time and have to reinstall Windows from like 48 floppy disks and I crashed <laughs> they just my have com- one that works. It just does all the fancy things that we couldn't wait for computers to do. Just just has always, as long as they've known their life with a computer. I thought, I thought my computer was crashing the other day. <clears throat> I spent three days trying to fix it. Uh, it kept doing all kinds of weird things. Applications would go crazy. The mouse would stop working. Text, like ghost text would start showing up on the screen. Like a Z it would just be like Z, 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 period, 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 period. And uh, after three days, almost taking it into the Apple store, feeling thoroughly defeated as a nerd, Wait, having to guess. take my computer somewhere. Let me guess. Was there a wireless <laughs> keyboard in the pocket of a backpack with the key depressed? <laughs> there, there was a wireless keyboard in a box in the closet with a bunch of shit on top of it. And it was 
wirelessly connecting over Bluetooth periodically <laughs> as I would jostle things in the closet to like right. look for things to fix the computer with. Uh, that's happened uh, to me with my backpack a number of times because I have a mouse that I keep in my in my bag always. So I can just, and part of my like, I got to go do work on the road kit. And every once in a while, I'll leave it turned on. And that's exactly the behavior that I encounter. <laughs> it's really Thanks for your help the other day. Thanks. Three days. <laughs> you told me what was happening. If you were like, my m- mouse keeps juddering, I would have said. <laughs> Do you have a wireless keyboard somewhere? Turn Bluetooth off. <laughs> uh, I feel like that went off the rails. But Way off the rails, but it was kind of fun. As good a place as any. Well, let's talk about our final. No, no, no. We've got a conclusion here. Okay. I've been waiting, waiting for a while. So what if we reframed classes and all of your classes were just today we're going to learn creativity or today we're going to learn problem solving. And then you just teach whatever the fuck you want in those classes. Teach some English, teach some math, teach some history. Build a birdhouse. Build a birdhouse. So I think the real moral, if there is any, (laughs) is that there's (laughs) There's always a moral. There's a lot of things we shouldn't teach kids anymore. But I don't think you're talking so much about the things we shouldn't teach. I think <laughs> I think the things that we think of is like, this is the thing you teach. Like the idea of curriculum more about when you're prepared for a certain thing and like the broader skill set that gets you to... to yeah, I mean, part of it is you just have to have perspective, but you also yeah. have to have the capacity to, you know, you have to have the, a subset. And so I think usually people that argue for things like, but here's why you need history. And then what they end up doing is making an argument for this subset like of skills that you pick up by writing historical essays Mm -hmm. that I think you could do in a much more accessible context in order to teach that skill. Yeah, they should just reverse the And then if what that person wants to focus on for the rest of their life is American history because they think that's fucking awesome and they want to do it forever, and it's yeah. going to result in a lot more America. people that are stoked about what they're doing. But it, it should be more about figuring out aptitudes and then ideal application of those aptitudes Yeah, along with building a baseline skill set that's about solving problems and, and talking to people and, <laughs> you know... Like, cause that'll help you get through everything. Media, they should be about media literacy. Cause talk about how much of your life are you going to spend bombarded by media? I know how to read a textbook real well. When's the next time you're going to read a textbook? Probably in, never in the world. Once you're done with that, <laughs> that task. <laughs> the moral's hard to pull out on this one. Maybe the moral uh, should just be uh, read less Shakespeare. No, I think we're going to the, like, yeah. <laughs> But it's about, I mean, it's just because Shakespeare, like, the stories are good, the morals are good, the delivery is not accessible at the age when they sort of impose it upon us. Yeah. Um, but, like, the stuff that the stories teach you are are valuable, and that's why teach good teachers are good, because they pull that stuff out of that stuff. But, like... Yeah. Like how to deal with hallucinations of but then blood after you murder somebody? A, yeah, totally. <laughs> you, you don't have that problem? <laughs> no, because I was taught how to deal with it. I'm glad that Shakespeare taught me how to murder deal with it. Murder more people or kill yourself or something, I think, was the solution. <laughs> yeah, I think she drowned herself. Um, but I, 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 I had the impulse just now, and then I pulled back to explain <laughs> the reference we just made. And then I was like, no, just let it sit. And then I was like, that's pretentious and shitty. I feel good about myself having just made a Shakespeare reference. I do. uh, But it's super unnecessary. And uh, I felt really good about myself picking up your reference and going to... Wait, to be clear, we were both talking about Macbeth, right? I think so. (laughs) Some lady kills somebody and she can't get blood out of something. has blood on her hands. And then I think she drowns herself in the river. That might be Ophelia in that might be Ophelia in Hamlet. You know, the characters overlap sometimes pretty um, heavily. Do they? I don't know. They seem similar. <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia was a woman. Did she kill somebody? <laughs> Did she kill somebody? Yeah, they're just like... Crossover storylines. <laughs> no, it's, it's just the same thing happens in every play. <laughs> there's only like two storylines, right? I but like... no, I think it comes back to the same thing that we're always talking about, which is the the skills, I think, that they try to give you currently with education and and I really hope this is changing. I haven't talked to any educators lately and I haven't been 10 a long time, but (laughs) like 
it they they don't teach enough communication skills and instead they teach what they think is the stuff you need to be on a path to like industrial output and what you actually need to prepare people for the post internet world is communication skills you need to know how to talk to other people and solve problems and make up ideas and and be connected with other people instead of just being like here's a thing Here's the science that I know. I apply it. Nothing else matters. And Excel. Don't forget about Excel. Like if you don't, sheets. if you don't know Excel, you're pretty much unhireable. <laughs> <laughs> that really could sum it up. You could just take four years of Excel in high school, and you and everyone on Earth would have like a useful job. Oh. <laughs> Data entry. Okay. Uh, let's 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 uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> Spin it up. Spin it out. Spit it out, boy. Uh, yeah, all the stuff. You know, find us on the socials, Zengineering Pod. Uh, you can email us with hello at zengineeringpodcast.com. This was like a like a friendly a, banter episode. This, this is a, weird a loose one. one. This, this is a, a weird, weird loose one. one. Yeah, I liked it, though. We got excited and Did we just like went it? with it. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a written letter, too. Okay, uh, I'm Adam. Uh, Brian. Thanks for spending the uh, afternoon with us. It's been great. <laughs> Only ice cream is going to save the day. <laughs> <laughs>